Hi guys and welcome back to World of Tanks and uh, well yep yeah, today I'm going to be looking at this the the first of the Swedish TDs with siege mode because not all of them do I think it's from about tier 7 um, seven or 8 upwards possibly but again I could be wrong on that I'm just trying to think back from when I had a look at them on the PC but this is the Stark STRV S1 and uh, I think it's basically that the Stark is there because it's the flag tank version so this one does cost more than the standard version. In fact, it's got a very hefty price tag at the moment of about 14,000 gold um, for the uh, the top sort of package uh, for this on its own. And it will be coming in cheaper bundles over time, but that's still very expensive. And uh, that's to account basically for it being a, a flag tank or hero tank, if you will. Um, and the fact that it's got perma camo on it, which does give you that increased camouflage rating. But... If I was going to buy this one, and uh, I'll be perfectly honest, I don't think I am. I will wait for the standard version without the flag on it because I, I hate it. Uh, I, you know, the other sort of perma camos, most of them, they're all right. You know, I know some people don't like the the motherland one. I don't mind it. Um, the, well, the hammer just looks a bit like a, something that's uh, evil. Can evil should have been driving. Um, but most of them, they're, they're sort of alright, you know, they're okay. This, I just don't like it. I know it's very basic, you know, it is just the Swedish flag. Um, but it just seems very garish, uh, with the big yellow cross on it. So, yeah, and, and the sort of very bright blue. So, not a fan of the, the paint job at all. The tank itself, um, I don't know, to be honest. I think my verdict is possibly still out. Uh, there are... You see, I think I'm going to just wait for the for the actual Swedish Tech Tree ones because from what I remember of seeing them, most of them, especially the higher tier ones, the 9 and 10 definitely, and I think the tier 8 as well, the, the gun barrel, because don't forget this is fixed in the hull, um, but the gun barrel is actually mounted more flush, um, and by that I mean with the hull, and by that I mean basically more sort of in line with the angle of the hull, so whereas... You know the the whole angles down and the gun sort of sticks out at that angle. I think on the uh, the tech tree ones, the gun is actually uh, sort of like I say follows the line of the hull more. So uh, I can't remember if the gun's actually pointing more towards the ground when you're driving in them, or whether the uh, the front of the hull is actually angled further up. But yeah, they they do seem to be angled a bit more down. And with this, actually, when you're in siege mode and aiming at something, um, quite often that angle is ever so slightly reduced on the front of the tank. Because if you look there, you can just see the barrel is pointing slightly upwards. Um, now, we don't have all the stats for this yet. I'm going to go in, let's have a look at the, uh, the, the gun itself. Now, the gun on this thing is very good. It, it is very, a very, very good gun. Um, to the point of which I would actually say it's a bit overpowered, this gun, to be perfectly honest. And I think it's a bit much, some of the, uh, the features on this. But it's a 10.5 centimeter, so a 105 mil, and has the most ridiculous pen on it that I've ever seen. It's actually, and I've been through the other TDs. Um, I can't remember what it is on the Scorpion G, but I don't think it's anywhere near that. I think the the Scorpion G is pretty much the same as it is on the uh, the Borsig. Um, but yeah, 288 millimeters of pen. This is a tier eight TD. It does see up to tier ten, so there's no preferential matchmaking. Uh, but yeah, 288 millimeters of pen and uh, 330 on your premium ammunition, both with 390 damage. Now, to put that into a bit of perspective for you, there is only one gun on a tier 8 TD that has higher premium penetration, and that is on the SU, is it the 101M? Uh, the, the other tier 8 Russian TD, the one that's not the ISU 152 with the troll cannon. Uh, which I think is 340. Other than that, that's the highest premium uh, ammo penetration on a tier 8 TD that I could find in the game. And it is the highest standard ammunition uh, penetration on any tier 8 TD, any of them, in the game. That is the highest pen. That's even, I think, one or two millimeters higher pen than the Troll Cannon itself, which is a 155 millimeter gun. 15.5 centimeters this is 10.5 centimeters or 105 which to me doesn't make sense now it does use APCR as standard ammunition and as premium ammunition um, so obviously you know APCR does have higher penetration but I just think it's overkill 
I really do. And, and the fact that this 10.5 centimeter gun or this you know 105 mil can sort of outpen any of the 128 mil and 155 mil guns on tier 8 TDs. And I mean, to be honest, some of the tier nines. I mean, the, the the T30, I don't think, has 288 mil of pen on its gun. That's something I will have to check. But, you know, that gives you an idea of the penetration on this thing. It is, it is just savage, is the only word for it. Um, and 390 pen, which is, you know, it's good for, a, you know, 105 mil. They're normally about anywhere from 300 to, to 390 on the uh, the 10.5 centimeter guns. Um, you've got 53 and 480 on your, your HE. Quite a long gaming time though of 3 seconds but um, the dispersion see it's massive dispersion after you've fired but it's settled back down again by the time you've aimed. And the dispersion doesn't seem too bad when you're moving it but uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't seem too bad on the rotation the dispersion but anyway. 0.4 accuracy as well which isn't great so they have tried to balance it out a little bit with the aiming time and the accuracy but the accuracy doesn't seem that bad either um, the the VK 1001P the new tier 8 German Heavy has an accuracy I think of 0.4 and that seems far less accurate than this does but anyway uh, when it's in driving mode uh, because you've got two it's got, got a 26 degree hull traverse and now it says 16 degrees for the turret. Now that could be when you're in siege mode. I really don't know. Um, but that could be what that's indicating. And a 350 meter view range, which is about average for a tier 8 TD with an 850 uh, radio range. Now equipment wise, I've gone for gun lane drive. Uh, you can't have a vertical stabilizer. I've gone for a gun rammer and I've gone for coated optics. Now I originally had vents on this and this, I mean, most TDs do anyway, but this, to me, and I, I could be wrong on this, they, these are sort of based on first impressions, uh, it seems to be a tank that will do better in platoons. Uh, I've done better in, in a platoon today than I did yesterday on my own. And I think that if you're going to go in a platoon, you could probably put uh, gun rammer, gun lane drive, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, gun, gun rammer, gun lane drive, and maybe vents on it to improve your reload and what have you. Um, if you're on your own, I would say you want coated optics. Now, Something that I, I made an assumption about and is something that I should possibly check it with this is camouflage net and um, binocular telescope. Now I'm under the assumption, because obviously when you move your hull they're not active, um, you know they have to reset and I've made the assumption that obviously because you have to move the hull to aim the gun that they would never actually be set up, you know, where you're trying to aim and what have you. Whether there's been any special sort of compensation sort of made for those with Siege Mode, I don't know. Um, I'm going to have a look before I actually jump into the replay, so by the time I get to the replay bit, I'll be able to let you know. But if that is the case, that there is no sort of special compensation for those, then basically Caminet and Binocular Telescope are completely ineffective on this. Because whenever you aim, whenever you move your gun, obviously it moves your hull. So... That's why I'd say coated optics if you're on your own to try and improve your view range and uh, vents you can get away within a platoon because somebody else is spotting for you. Skill wise, um, camouflage, yeah, definitely. Um, obviously, sixth sense. Repairs because if you get tracked, you can't aim or anything. You know, you've got no gun movement whatsoever if you're tracked. I'm not even sure if you can move it up and down, to be honest. Um, I don't think you can at all. Probably clutch braking as well. Um, it's very very hard to hit stuff when you're not in siege mode I've done it twice now once from more or less point blank and the other was very very lucky um, but it is very 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 hard to, to hit things when you're not in siege mode but you can move in siege mode which is something that I, I've missed well I, I thought you couldn't at all but you can move in siege mode just not very quickly um, so you can move forwards and backwards on ridge lines um, let's have a look at the supplies before we go into the other stuff well, like I say, APCR is your standard and your premium ammunition, and they run you at, well, 1,160 and 4,800, respectively. Um, I've been very boring with my consumables as well. And uh, I think that's about it for those bits. Uh, oh, your bonus is on it. It's 60% uh, silver bonus and 10% crew, well, no, sorry, not crew, 10% uh, XP bonus. And armor-wise, very basic as well, but it has got some very good angles. However, there are no figures at all for when it's in siege mode, because obviously its movement is slower, a lot slower. 
and uh, the the gun depression and elevation that it gives you in this, uh, which you'll see in a minute, are basically for for when you are not in siege mode. Um, you know, you can get you you. It's got very good gun depression and elevation when in siege mode. So I have passed it on to Wargame in saying that for these siege mode tanks, we really could do with the stats for both for when it's in siege mode and out of siege mode because at the moment we've only got them for when it's in driving mode. But anyway, uh, 540 horsepower engine, which gives it a power to weight ratio of 16.36, which isn't too bad. Um, not great, but it's not too bad. Not the quickest TD, not the slowest TD. Um, so yeah, speed-wise, it, it's not bad. It's okay. Um, now, forward top speed, 50 kilometers an hour. Um, again, quite a nice forward top speed. However, it does seem faster. I mean, it does 45 kilometers an hour in reverse, and for some reason, almost seems to have a better power to weight ratio in reverse. Uh, it seems to just accelerate quicker. I don't quite know why, but uh, again, it's kind of a moot point because it doesn't do 45 kilometers an hour in reverse in siege mode, which is what you're most likely to be in. Because if you're up on a ridge and all of a sudden you get spotted and you want to back off quickly. You know, you're just gonna have to do it in siege mode and do it very slowly. Um, otherwise, you're gonna have to press your button to go back into drive mode, which takes like one and a half seconds or something. Uh, in fact, 1.3 seconds it says there, and then back off. So yeah, it's kind of good for getting you out of trouble if you're sort of going around a corner and all of a sudden there's something there, you know, and you're like shit, need to get out of there. You can back off quickly, but uh, apart from that, it is kind of a moot point. Now, interestingly, 10% chance of fire. I am forever getting set on fire in this. Preventative maintenance would be a good one to put on it because the engine is in the front. So generally, if you're going to get hit through the front, a lot of the time it will damage your engine. Most of the time it seems to set me on fire. So yeah, just be aware of that. Um, even though it is only a 10% chance of fire, it seems to be falling in that 10% more, than, more times than not. Uh, entering drive mode, like I said before, 1.3 seconds. Entering siege mode is 2 seconds. Now... Depending on your control setup, depends on what button it is, but it's the same one for hull lock. So just go into your options, check what control setup you've got it on if you're not sure, and it will show you on there. On mine, uh, I have handbrake on um, L1, which would be left bumper, and my radial commands are now on... Um, I can't remember which control system it is, but my radial commands are now on X, and change ammo is on down on my D-pad, and my hull lock is set to left on the D-pad. Um, so if you're using the same one as me, there you go. Concealment wise, nice actually when it's stationary, 0.46. Uh, on the move it's 0.29. However, again, something I, I will check with Wargaming, but I can't today because they're, they're uh, going on a team building, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, something that I will have to check actually whether that stationary counts for siege mode. Because while you're in siege mode, your hull is not stationary. Do you get the point that, um, you know, it's very vague on some of these stats. Like I say, so if that does count for siege mode, then when you're in siege mode, 0.46. If not, then as soon as you aim your gun, your camo rating is going to drop drastically. Which is a problem uh, for any TD. Now, gun stats, again, these are not for when you're in siege mode, for when you're firing. There you can raise your gun, well, your hull up and down quite a deal but it says four and two so that's you know plus four minus two but i i can't give you the actual figures unfortunately because i don't have them uh, oh you've got a thousand hit points as well by the way terrain resistances aren't great 1.4 1.5 and 2.6 so again not brilliant terrain resistances um i think that's probably why it feels a bit slower than it than its power to weight ratio sort of implies uh, your radio is, well, in the middle of the hull, really. Um, I don't think I've had my radio knocked out on it yet, although I could be slightly wrong. Ammo locations are towards the back, so if you shoot one of these through the back, aim for next to the tracks, basically, either side. Next to the track, you've got a good chance of hitting, or try and aim, well, yeah, towards the back, sort of towards the rear of the tracks, just in front of the, the rear drive wheel, anywhere from the sort of top of the hull down, really. Uh, you've got a good chance of hitting ammo rack. Now, it says armor depth 5 to 45 millimeters. Now, uh, it's armor. Oh, crew, sorry, nearly forgot about those. Only three crew. The commander under his uh, commander's cupola, which is quite rounded. And then you've got the driver, and I'm assuming gunner slash loader. Uh, one of those, unless 
Unless this is one of those weird tanks that's supposed to be driven backwards. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but I don't think so. But it does go quite nippy in reverse. Now, armor-wise, 30 mil all round. That is the, the basic figure. And it's not too far from that, to be fair. Um, 1 to 20 is most of the tank. Um, the whole top of it, the commander's hatch, parts of the sides, uh, the tracks. Well, the upper sides, yeah, they fall into that. A little bit of the rear as well, as you can see there, and the tracks fall under that bracket. 21 to 30 is... Let's have a look. It's a funny angle to try and get it at. Right, the rear of the tank falls into that bracket, and it looks like you've actually almost got spaced armour, is that? Let's have a look. You see, that's your 20 mil or 1 to 20 mil. And then if you come across to 21 to 30, you can see that the hull actually, the hull sides behind the tracks fall into that. So yeah, that whole sort of corner bit could be some sort of spaced armour because it looks pretty solid behind there. But it is, and there you go, and that's a bit better. So yeah, you have got sort of two layers of armour, so it does look like you have a bit of spaced armour on the side. Um, so that explains a bit of something. Uh, I didn't notice that before when I was looking at it because of the colours being quite similar and hard to tell apart sometimes but yeah so it, it does look like those upper sides are spaced armor there um which will save you a little bit from he but these are fun to throw he at I, I can i can't wait to come across one of these in my kv2 that's going to be so much fun um and then you've just got a slightly thicker bit which is your 45 millimeters which is your gun and that patch on the front there which is, is basically indicated by the spare track on the front of it. it it does act as slightly thicker armor on this now with it being 30 mil all round in theory, a 90mm gun should be able to overmatch this no matter the angle. However, I have bounced shots from some fairly hefty guns in this. It is difficult. Um, I bounced, well, I bounced an 88 earlier from a Panther. Um, or is it a Panther 2, possibly? But uh, I think I have also bounced... What was it? Was it a KV-3, maybe? Um, I'm trying to think now, but yeah... So I'm not sure. I mean, I was under the impression that overmatching would occur no matter the angle. But I, I could be wrong with that. But then again, you know, that's the whole point of overmatching. And the top of the IS-3's turret is very, very, very uh, well angled. But you can still overmatch that. So yeah, theoretically, anything that's 90mm above should be able to overmatch the front of this. But I think I've gone on for quite long enough uh, in the garage. It's turned out to be very long. So let's get into the replays and see how it actually handles. Right, so here we are for the first of the replays. Um, this one is my very first match in this, uh, actually. And before I get started on this, uh, a couple of things. One, I did mention in the garage about um, camouflage net and uh, binocular telescope. Now, in between doing the garage bit and uh, obviously editing this all together, I uh, replaced two of the pieces of equipment with binocular telescope and a camo net and just went into the training room and uh, it turns out they have made a compensation for that in siege mode so like I said before you can move when you're in siege mode it's just very very slow um, but if you've got a binocular telescope and a camo net on as long as you don't actually drive forwards or backwards um, they will stay active so when you're in siege mode you can uh, raise and lower the hull and obviously you know traverse the hull uh, left and right you know by aiming the gun and your binocular telescope and your uh, camo net will stay active until you actually you know move the hull forwards or backwards so that is good that that compensation has been made and uh, I just want to expand on, on what I was saying about the gun the fact that I think the gun is quite overpowered and uh, it's a combination of I mean the rate of fire is quite good you know it's not bad um, there are better rates of fire, but it's fairly average for, for these sort of tier 8 TDs with this sort of, you know, roundabout damage. And pen, but it is... The pen, like I say, 288 is... It just seems a bit overkill. Um, I mean, the gun is very, very competitive in, in tier 10 matches because of the, the very high levels of pen on it. Um, the tank, not so much. Uh, like I say, anything 90 mil or above should, in theory, overmatch the frontal armour. Uh, anything below that, I mean, I shot at one of these from close with a, the, the 88 on the Panther 2. No, not Panther 2. Uh, the long 88 on the Panther 88, in fact. 
and it bounced. Obviously, that's an 88 mil. So do bear that in mind. Like I say, be be very aware of what's shooting at you because if it if it does have a gun bigger than a 90 mil um, or a 90 mil or bigger, there's a good chance it could overmatch your armor no matter the angle. But yeah, the shell velocity on this is 1,450 meters a second on your standard rounds. It's 50 meters less for your premium rounds, but yeah. 1,450 meters a second for your premium rounds. That is a ridiculous shell velocity, coupled with the ridiculous pen on this thing. Um, and I, I probably shouldn't tell you this um, because it, it may encourage some bad gameplay. But it, it, it's almost—you can see how fast it is in reverse. Sorry, yeah, just digressing there. But it is almost as though when you're in siege mode. You can basically use your auto lock and fire, and it's kind of like an easy mode um, because you lock on, you fire, and because the shell velocity is so great, the shell gets to the target almost instantly. And because the pen is so great, it doesn't matter where you're aiming on the damn thing. Chances are you're going to pen. I mean, look at this revolorize there. You know he's moving. And I'm not even having to, you know, I know he's not moving particularly quick, but I'm not really having to lead him as such. Now he's sat still. Bang. That shell velocity is ridiculous. And like I say, coupled up with the, uh, with the massive pen on, uh, you know, massive pen on this thing, it, sometimes it does feel a bit like easy mode. Just lock on, fire, bang. And something else I've noticed as well. Now you see that aim time. Three second aim time, that doesn't seem that long really, does it? Very wide dispersion, but before I'm even halfway reloaded, it's aimed in again, and there's hardly any dispersion when you move in the hull. Well, that's what it seems like now. Something else I've noticed with this, and I don't know if, it, if it's some sort of error with the siege mode or what. Now, I am not going to be buying this tank, or I'm not going to be buying this version of this tank. If I get this, and I'm not saying I will. In fact, you know, it, only if I'm gonna, I'm still gonna play about in it for the next few days. Well, I've got it on loan because I am starting to get used to it now. Um, and then that's what it seems to be. It seems to take a bit of getting used to. Now, siege mode. I don't mind siege mode at all. Um, it's fine. But you can see how slow it is looking in siege mode. I'm just not sure if I particularly like this tank. Uh, I like the gun. The gun's great. I'm just not sure if I particularly like this tank. But the uh, yeah, Siege Mode, I don't mind it. And, uh, you know, I am looking forward to the Swedish Tech Tree um, TDs, actually. I am really looking forward to those. It's just like I say, I'm not sure if I'm keen on this tank itself. The uh, the angle on the armour is okay. But like I say, the, the, uh, the Tech Tree ones seem to have uh, a greater angle when you're in Siege Mode. Now, there you go, look, it's locked on, bang, fired, dead. Now, uh, oh yeah, I've digressed again. Uh, yes, when you're on a ridge line, and I don't know, there's, there's something with this, and I, it, I did see it a, f a few times actually. If you're moving backwards and forwards over the ridge line, looking through your gun view, you'll have to come further up over the ridge to aim at the target. What I seem to have noticed, and I don't know if this, because they did a micro update yesterday, didn't they? Uh, not yesterday, uh, earlier today. Um, yesterday was the main update. Yeah, did a micro update earlier today, and um, it seems to be that if you're in the sort of you know the follow cam or the the third person view as I like to call it, which is this one, and you're coming up over a ridge line, if you lock onto the target and move slowly up, a lot of the time you can actually hit them before you would be able to if you were actually looking through your gun through your sniper view. That's what it seemed to be because there were times where I was coming up over the ridge line in this view, locked onto a target, just moving forwards. And my cursor would change colour, my aiming circle would change colour as I could hit that target and I would fire and hit them. But then I would do the same, move over, get the cur you know, the target in circle to change colour so I'm locked onto them and I could hit them. And then I would go into the gun view and I wouldn't be able to see them and I would have to move further up and over to actually shoot at them. So. I'm not saying that that's that is the case, and that you know you should do that. You should always try and do it out of sniper view first, just by locking on and moving forwards. I'm just saying that's what it seemed to be. Whether that was a bit of an issue or a glitch, who knows? But 
Um, yeah, that did seem to be the case that you could actually lock on and be able to shoot at tanks sort of sooner um, when you're in the third person view coming up over ridge lines than you could in, in sort of sniper view or whatever. Um, but again, you know, these are first impressions. This has been a very, very difficult tank. I mean, they're just under 2,500 damage. It didn't do particularly well in that match. But this has been a very tricky tank to get used to, um, coupled with the siege mode and the fact that you, you know, you have to sort of change the tank modes from driving about to, you know, sitting still. Um, I am happy with the fact that you can move about in siege mode. It has made it... Uh, well, it, it's made it a lot... You know, I thought that's going to be pretty bad. You know, you're going to have to be very careful about your positioning and everything else. And uh, this match, again, not the, not the highest damage. It was a good match. It was entertaining. And I'm just getting used to the tank and getting used to siege mode and the positioning and everything else. Um, but it does tend to work a bit better in platoons, like I say. But, you know, I did say in the garage that you need coated optics because of the movement. Now you don't. You can put binocular telescope on a camo net. Yeah, that could be uh, quite effective. And I'm guessing as well that the stationary concealment that I was on about in the garage saying, well, it does that count in siege mode? Because obviously you're moving the hull, you're turning the hull, you know, does that class as stationary? Well, binocular telescope and camo net are only active when stationary, so I can only assume that that is the, the you know, the point four nine I think it was, is going to be when you're in siege mode as long as you're not moving the hull backwards and forwards up and down turning left and right seems to be fine um, but again I'm speculating on that one but I know for certain like I say about the equipment that's fine you can put those on now I am platooned up with my wife here and uh, I've not gone very far in as you can see but I found a fairly good position and I'm just keeping an eye on things seeing what I can do but this was a match somebody beeping the car outside uh, this was a match like I say that uh, I've started to sort of get more used to it um, like I said I, I don't mind siege mode I really, I, it really doesn't bother me uh, I, you know it's a novelty <laughs> I do like the way that these tanks work with the with the suspension and everything like I said I'm just, I don't know if I'm keen on this tank but it is great you know I've got to say it is growing on me it was painful at first. It was very difficult to use. And up until probably, apart from the first match, which you've just seen, that was my very first game in it. And this match, I basically managed in nearly every match I was in, somewhere between two and four scoring hits. And then I'd be killed. And that'd be it. But it is, I don't know, It's um, it's a tricky one. It, I don't know, it seems, you see, I, I can't really, I'm trying to give you sort of gameplay tips on it and let you know my opinion. This is not going to be for everybody. I can kind of see these being limited appeal. Because they are not, you know, like I say, they're not going to be for everybody. Not everybody likes glass cannon TDs, and that's kind of what I'd call this, because even though it's got very well angled armor, it's still only 30mm, and 90mm in theory can overmatch it. Although having said that, I bounced a VK4502B close range. Um, it bounced off me. I'm just trying to think what it had on it though. It had the upgraded turret. If it had the upgraded turret, it can't have had the, sh the, the long 88. So it must have had a 105. But yeah, it's just it's very odd. Like I say, very odd. It might have hit my gun. Who knows? Um, but yeah. I think, uh, you know, the armour, don't rely on the armour is what I'm saying. You know, the, the long and short of it, don't rely on the armour. I'm going to look into it more. I might even jump in a training room um, with my wife and sort of get a shoot at it with a, you know, like a... Oh, didn't see him there. Yeah, sorry, didn't see you behind that bush. Um, yeah, I might even get my wife to, to jump in something with a, you know, a long 88 and... Uh, you know, because that's 203 mm pen that I should get through this, and see if it bounces, you know, because of the angle. And then get her to jump in something with a 90 mil and see if the overmatching does occur. Um, I'll do a bit of experimentation over the next few days, and I'll, I'll let you guys sort of know the results. Or, more than likely, I'll, I'll just pop a short video up about it. But, I feel fairly confident in saying that 
if it's anything that you know to have less than a 90 mil gun on it, there's a damn good chance you're going to bounce it shot. I've been up against lower tier stuff, um, a Panther with the, you know, that long 75 mil with the 198 pen, and it was bouncing all day long off the front. It really was the, you know, it just kept bouncing and bouncing. So, yeah, like I say, I'd, I'd, I would be happy in saying feel confident against anything that has less than a, a 90 mil gun. Uh, I would be very wary of anything other than that. Now this is where it might get a bit tricky. We've got a Centurion over there, the 7 1. Uh, my wife's there in a nameless. She's keeping him occupied while I basically get into position, but we had to turn around and come back because he was there at cap. Or heading towards our cap. Now I've got myself in position. I've told her just to back off a bit, let him come round. There we go. And he's come round, trying to get his shot in, and he did, unfortunately. And just saying to her, again, we're sort of sat in the same room, which is why we don't have the platoon chat on, because we're like two feet from each other, she's behind me, and I'm in front, you know, I'm sat here. Um, we just have a, a couple of, you know, we bring a, a TV up, a bit down from upstairs. So that's why there's no platoon chat, but I'm just saying to her, you know, let him come back out. And I have a feeling, I thought he did actually, and I got a couple of hits into him, in fact I did while I was rambling on there. But now he's going to back round that way. So my wife turns around to go and meet him, he's dropped off radar. And then I suddenly get the feeling that he's not coming that way. He's bluffing and he's going to come back the other way. And there we go. Just as I got that feeling, that's when he popped up. He did get a shot into me. But the traverse on this isn't too bad. And coupled with the shell velocity, all I've done, literally, is locked onto him. I've just locked onto him, and I didn't even bother touching the stick. That's what I mean. Sometimes it just seems... It's, it's a really funny tank. Sometimes it just seems like easy mode. Other times, it seems like one of the hardest tanks in the game to bloody use. It's a very, very odd, odd thing. Um, but that's why I didn't put this, this review up on Tuesday. Uh, yesterday, in fact, the, the day that it came out and why I chose to do the medium. And that's because I wanted to spend more time in this. If I'd have put the review up yesterday when it was released, I would not have been happy with this or Siege Mode. And uh, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to get used to it, you know, play, play more with it and see if I could get to grips with it, see if it was just me being, well, basically being arsey. <laughs> because I was doing crap in it. Or whether it was just, yeah, this tank in Siege Mode don't seem to work on console. Now, like I say, I'm not going to be buying this tank. Um, definitely not this version of it, at least. If I buy this, I will wait for the plain version. But to be honest, I really can't see myself getting it. And like I said before, I, I think personally, if I pick up one of the Swedish tanks, it's going to be the medium. And I'm going to wait for the tech tree versions of this. Uh, like I say, Siege Mode, I'm, I'm quite happy with Siege Mode personally. I, I think it works. Like I say, some people are not going to be happy with it. What Wargaming really should have done with this is what they've done before with tanks, where they, they've updated the tanks in the, uh, you know, in the Proving Grounds, in the, uh, in the tutorial part of it. They've quite often updated the tanks in there. I remember the KB-5 was in there at one point before that came out. And it gave people a chance just to have a go in it. And I think that's really what they should do with this. I mean, they're expecting people to spend a lot of money. 14,000 gold is a lot. On a tank with a completely new game mechanic that they've never seen before. On faith. Or on, on you know, oh, well, I'll have a go. And I, I think it's a lot to ask, to be honest. And I think they really should have put this tank in the, the tutorials, in the Proving Ground. So that people could at least have a go at Siege Mode and before they decide to buy the tank. And I think they probably would have sold more. I think more people are going to be put off by the fact that, you know, they don't know what Siege Mode is going to feel like to them. Um, and I think that's going to put more people off than it is, than, than it is, than it, you know, than it's going to sell tanks. And I think they, like I say, if they'd have put this in the trading ground, they probably would have sold more. But, like I say, Siege Mode, I quite enjoy. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm keen on this tank, but I, I do feel that the gun on this is a bit OP, to be honest. Um, 
and like I say, sometimes it just feels like you can be in siege mode, lock on, fire, bang, you'll hit because the shell velocity is that fast and the the the, the, the uh, penetration is that high that it doesn't seem to matter where you hit them. Now the reason we went to cap here is because basically the last tank that was left was a T-54E1, tier 9 auto loading heavy. We were both on low health, he could have killed us both in two shots, three shots, and he's got four. Um, so yeah, screw it, cap. Um, because obviously we, he was on nearly full health as well, so you know we could have both hit and penned and he'd still be alive and we'd be dead, and that'd be it. But yeah, just over 2,000 damage. Um, tricky tank to use. I don't... I, I think... I think I like Siege Mode, but I don't really like that tank. I love the gun on it, but I think personally I'm going to wait for the Tech Tree ones. Uh, I've seen these, and I've not seen many do well. I've seen the odd one, but that's about it. Anyway, there you go. The Stark STRV S1. Um, hmm. A hell of a lot of money for a risk. Um, really, if, you know, if you hate Siege Mode. And I know some people, they don't know Jack the Ripper, he hated this tank and he hated Siege Mode. And I can't blame him. You know, I can see a lot of people feeling that way. I've prattered about with it a lot more, and I feel like I'm getting to grips on it. It still irritates me at times, but again, I think that's more the tank than Siege Mode itself. And uh, I, I do kind of think that the gun is a bit overpowered for what it is. Like I say, it's a 105 that outpens any 128 and 155 gun on any Tier 8 TD in the game, and some of the Tier 9s. Uh, and I just think it's a bit too much, coupled with the ridiculously high shell velocity as well, but there you go. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you found it informative. Very, very long review this one. Not done one quite as long as that for a while. Um, I'll be back tomorrow with another video for you. So until then, take care out there and I'll catch you next time. See you later.